Hi, welcome to another computer tutoring training session. What we're going to do is uh, look at an issue that somebody uh, who asked me earlier on this very week. Now, they were using Excel 2010, but if you're using 13 or as I am using here 2016, you will find this a lot easier. So what do I mean? Well, you probably know of pivot tables, etc. So here we go, I've got our pivot table, uh, well, our table here. Uh, just haven't got any borders or anything like that at all on that. So I just sort of like um, have no fill. Just get rid of that one there. And that's good. So there's no, uh, in, just got a basic table there. And we've got all of, all of our sales and that's not a problem at all. But what I need to have is a unique value, you know, to have a unique value there. So let's take the easy one, shall we? First of all, so that's 2013. Or 16 so what I normally do is I create a table out of this so if you haven't seen that I go up to the top here and then I would click on the format as table button just at the top and then I would choose a particular color so I'm gonna go down to this green one here and click on OK and you can see my table is nicely formatted the next thing I would do is go up to the top and I would rename my table so this is the second attempt at this so this is going to be table two. Uh, so I, oh, that's not really a good name there. So I'm just going to highlight that and call that one TBL customers. Now, if you look here, you can see Jack is repeated twice. Fred is repeated twice. And there's only a few of them there. So I want to know out of the seven customers that have ordered here, who, uh, how many different customers do I have? How many unique values do I have? Well, first, if you are in Excel 2013 and 2016, you can add this to the data model and use a function that's built within the pivot table called count distinct. Let me show you how you do this. So first thing, make sure you're in the data. Second thing, if you're using the table tools and clicked on design, you can click on summarize with pivot table. So you see summarize as pivot table. You can give that one a click and that will create a new pivot table here out of it. So there we go, we're using table customers. I'm going to put it on an existing sheet. I'm going to put it in cell, actually, I'm going to put it in cell E1. And then down here, there's a checkbox you're going to have to need to press. So this one, which says, add this data to the data model. So make sure that you check that checkbox, click on OK, and then it will create our pivot table. So we can see our pivot table. Let me just move myself out of the way over here. So if we want to just do a basic pivot table, I can drag from this section over here. So you can see this section I can drag and I can drag the various fields down to rows and values. So just if I wanted to know uh, basic, a basic replica of that pivot table, I can drag name and I can drag down to uh, name down to rows. And I can type sales down to values and I can get these certain um, amount there, the sum of all the sales of the different individuals. So you can see Fred and Jack, they have um, summed. And of course I can go and if I wanted to change the currency, you know, or change the numbers into pounds and pence, I can go down to this bottom bit just here and I can click on this particular drop down that arrow. And then I would choose value field settings. So you see there where it says value field settings, give that a click. There we go. And then click on number format. And then I would choose, I prefer accounting particularly because I just think it looks a little bit tidier and it lines up all the uh, units of currency and also zero numbers are represented as dashes instead of putting little zeros. I think it looks a bit better than currency, which looks more like a shopping list. There we go. English United Kingdom. That's better. Click on OK. Okay, so we can go here if I need to change this. I've got this here, English United Kingdom. Click on OK, and then I click on OK again. You can see now it's all pounds and pence. And notice that the unit of currency here is all lined up just as it should be just here. That's great. Okay. So that's that's fine. Okay, now if I wanted to do this easy way and I wanted to um, do a distinct count, remember I checked that little checkbox when I created the pivot table to add it to the data model. If you've done that, what I can do is I can drag in, say, name again. So I've got count of name, but I want a distinct count. I can go to the drop down list and choose value field settings in exactly the same way as I did the date. And then I can go down and I can choose distinct counts and click on OK. And now I've got distinct count. 
So there we go, so 2013 and 16 users, fantastic.